the Art and Industry of Business and Living podcast, discussing conscious choices around business, money, life and living and creating a greater future for you and the planet. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Art and Industry of Business and Living. You are with your host, Simone Melissus, and I am in, I'm at the Lazy Double D Ranch in Blytheville, Texas. So never thought that I would be here, but here I am, ladies and gentlemen, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's, uh, there's lots of rain, it's beautiful and green, and it's like horses everywhere and cows and chickens and lots of different animals here. So it's been fun to create and be here and, you know, in between meetings and stuff, walk outside and, and go check out the animals and, and pat a horse and, and listen to the sounds actually last night going to bed with the sound of the cows was pretty awesome. And that, to me, is the art and industry of business and living. It's like, what if you could have your business and you also, you know, you lived. Live a little, kids. <laughs> so today, uh, we're talking about one of my favorite topics because even though it's everywhere, it's also controversial. And we're going to talk about money. And I am with fellow Joy Business Facilitator, Heather Nichols. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yes. And we're going to um, yeah. shoot the breeze about money because one of the things that that we have, let me do a little plug first here, is all the Joy Business Facilitators, well, not all of them, but are doing a a two-and-a-half-day Getting Out of Debt Joyfully class. And it's based on my book. It's based on the year-long courses that we've been doing. And I think there's about 10 JCFs around the world that will be doing it, and Heather will be one of them. So we wanted to, we sort of got talking about money. And one of the things that I find interesting is a lot of people who have just met me you know, or have known in the last few years, it's like their point of view is that I've always had money. And in the back of my Getting Out of Debt Joyfully book, we have some chapters there that, you know, especially the one with uh, Brendan Watt and Chris Hughes, I think are amazing because they tell stories about, you know, Chris having to leave his car at the side of the road because it ran out of petrol and didn't have any money to put in it. You know, and he, and he had pots and pans in the back for his friend, Brendan's birthday, and grabbed those out and then walked to the nearest phone and then rang someone to come pick him up. And it's like, you know, and then Brendan, who couldn't pay his electricity bill, so he didn't have any electricity and worked out how he could, you know, wire his electricity down the hallway to, you know, take his apartment's electricity and was really happy that he created that. So there's a lot of people that I know that didn't have money. In fact, they were living in in below average uh, means and now they've created something different. So we were having a little bit of a chat with the JCFs about money and wanted to start this conversation so that people could get that anyone could create something different because my point of view is always no one needs to have a money problem. So if no one needs to have a money problem, what can you choose? Yeah. So let's give a little bit of a feedback, Heather, on you growing up with money. It's like, you know, did you have money? Yeah. Were you allowed to talk about money? Was it all around you? What was it like for you growing up with money? Yeah, I did grow up with money, and it was everywhere. And, and you know, my family, we traveled all over the world and did actually did some really fun things with money and going to really amazing, like, Michelin restaurants when I was a kid in France and, you know, all over. And But I also grew up with a lot of kind of messaging that, I didn't have the, like, the brilliance or the genius that my dad had about money. Like, that my dad, my dad got money right. And, um, and he's, he's actually has a lot of brilliance with money and he's created amazing wealth just with investments and things like that. But there was always this sense of, like, he's got it right and we would need to do it like him in order to get it right. And okay, can I, I ask you a question wanted. here? Can I, yeah. I, and I and I hate to make this sexist, um, but I do see this occur so much, especially in in you know uh, past generations. Was that just because you're a kid? Was it because you're female? Was it you know what do you get that was from, or was it just that he had the rightness of him, and everyone else wasn't going to get it as right as him? I would say probably a little bit of all of it. I think definitely because I was a kid and because I was his kid, you know, and I think a little bit because I was a female and I think also like he really just, you know, he got it right. I mean, this is a man who he meets with financial advisors and they want to know what he's done, you know, <laughs> so he's, right. he's really, he's got a lot of brilliance with it. But 
there was never a question of like, hey, Heather, what do you know about money that I might not know? You know, how do you create money? What's true for you with money? You know, I didn't really have that question in my world until I found access consciousness. Uh, and then it was like, what? Me? Like, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm so just a, a kid. Friend of mine, I'm just, um, <laughs> a, a, a friend of mine or someone that we both know, actually, she said that she was brought up and she was actually brought up in Texas and she wasn't brought up to be educated about money. She was brought up to be her. She was brought up to be the daughter mm-hmm. of blah, 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 you know. And it's like, and that's, that was her job, basically. It wasn't to learn about money. It wasn't to be educated about money. None of that. It was like, you know, how to eat properly, how to, how to dance, how to talk, how to walk, how to, but nothing to do with how to create money and how to have it and how to invest or anything like that. Was that, sort of how you were brought up or was it something different or no I I actually was educated about money I mean my, my dad would teach like he taught me how to balance my checkbook when I like my very first checking account when I was 16 it was like okay here you go like this is how you do it and so he did actually teach me some great things he taught me about investing and but it was still with a sense of like this is the way this is the only way you know and so, and I'm really grateful because I actually have always kept my own books. I've, I've since I was 16, <laughs> you know, so for 30, 32 years. Um, and I, I do my own bookkeeping still. And I, you know, keep looking at. I should probably hire somebody, but, um, but it's really easy for me. And I do have a lot of savvy with money in that way. And I, I, I'm really grateful for my dad for that. So it, it, I think for me, what the the big thing that has been such a gift that I didn't get, but that I, you know, since playing with access consciousness and the joy of business is the awareness piece. You know, it's that like, what do you know? Like, what is true for you with money, and what is your reality with money? And and that was never something that I ever even considered before this stuff. Like gosh, what is it, you know, how do I like to use my money? What works for me that might not at all work for somebody else? So when when do you so think funny. that you actually started to change your point of view about that? Like realize that, hey, hang on a second. What if I started to look at what I was aware of with money? Gosh, I mean, I, I would say probably right, like as soon as I got introduced to the money tools, and access, which are so dynamic. I mean, I, one of the very first books I read was Money Isn't the Problem You Are, um, the first access books that I read. <laughs> yeah, and I started changing my money flows right away. I mean, I, my money flows have changed so much um, since finding access and joy of business and um, really, like, grown and grown. Um, and a lot of it is from that conversation. Um, and it's so interesting just to look at how how deep it can run sometimes, you know, like when we had this meeting the other day about this getting out of debt joyfully class, it was like, wow, you know, I still had, I was like, wow, there's still so much judgment in my world around money and debt and, you know, like having no debt. That was a big one for my dad. It was like no debt, you know, like even the mortgage, like when he retired, he was like, the mortgage is paid, no debt, no debt, no debt at all, at all costs, like no debt. You know, and so that was a big one for me, like just having judgments around debt and which and, is interesting you know, anything... because if you look at that, you grew up with that, right, that your father is, is uh-huh. projecting basically because it's a projection like, of, you know, no uh-huh. debt. And it's like even no mortgage, et cetera. Whereas what I grew up with with my dad, who is an accountant as well, he grew up with use the equity, like which yeah. means debt. It's like you're using, yeah. but it's so funny. It's like if you look at these two girls growing up and it's like with these successful, you know, parents and it's like, and if you mm-hmm. brought into their point of view that they that your father or your mother, whoever it is, or both are correct and that's how you try and create your financial reality, then where are you in the computation? So let's yeah. do this right yeah. now. It's like everyone is listening to this that's going, oh crap, that's exactly what I've done, you know, whether it sounds familiar <laughs> Like Heather's story or my story or somebody else's story. What if it what if it became your story and not somebody else's? And everything at that is time to go dealing with destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good yeah. that, pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys and beyond. Because my father also, I remember when I told him that I was gonna start this business of importing, exporting, and he looked at me and he goes, 
while Simone said you're choosing a business that's going to take a lot of time, you know, it's going to take a lot of your time out, you're going to be working on weekends, you're going to be doing this. And he stipulated everything that he had decided it was. And I remember looking mm-hmm. at him thinking, hmm, I don't know if it has to be like that. I wasn't against working a lot, but I was like, I don't think it has to be like that. But I, for some reason, I was smart enough to know not to talk to him about it, that that's not what he could hear at the time. I just went, you know what, I'm going to have an adventure here and see what shows up and see if I actually follow the energy with business, what can show up. So I just kept doing that. And, and then, you know, that's lo and behold, then I met Gary Douglas. Yeah. So, but it is interesting yeah. that how if you grow up with your parents' point of view rather than actually create your point of view around money, it's like, where are you in the computation? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. you're not. Well, and so I love you what you said. I'm going to have an adventure here. I mean, that's like, yeah. who does that? You know, who has an adventure with business? I money? thought everybody you know? did, Heather. <laughs> but know, apparently, joy business facilitators you. do, though. <laughs> What's funny is, I think I was always willing to have an adventure with business and money, but I always made it wrong. You know, that, like, so when I started looking at, well, what right. do I know about this? It was like, oh my gosh. I mean, business has always been so fun for me and like really my primary creative playground, you know, and I don't have a lot of really have a lot of points of view about money and, you know, but I just have taken on a lot of points of view and, but that's so wrong. Like having an adventure with business and money, that's wrong in this reality. You have to take it seriously. It has to be significant, you know? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, what he's projected at us. And so I'm going to give a bit of home play here on this call because I just came off the Creative Edge call, uh, which is a call that occurs with Gary, Dane, and sometimes Brendan, Watt, and myself. And one of the things that Gary and Dane were talking about is destroying and uncreating. So literally this is what you do. At least for five days, I'm calling 10 days, okay? For 10 days, it's like destroy and uncreate everything that your business is and that you thought it was yesterday. And everything at that is time to gazillion, right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. I want you to do that every single morning. Write a note, you know, put in a, um, a reminder in your phone or whatever works for you. And it's like destroy and uncreate everything that you decided your business was yesterday. Right and wrong, good and bad, pock and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And then ask, you know, if I was truly creating my business, what would I like to create? What am I aware of with this? Because the yeah. amount of times too that, and you're probably the same, it's like we, we do these classes all over the world and, and do sessions, etc. And the amount of times what, what I get to with people is they don't actually really want to do what they're doing. They prefer to do something else. So yeah. what if that was okay? What if you could get to that place that you went, you know what, I had a great time with this. It's sort of like carrying a relationship on for 30 years because you started it. No, after five years, if it's done, it's done. Same as a business. Yeah. And it's like you will stop yeah. your money flows if you don't actually have joy in what you are creating and doing and being. So give that, you know, money, that home pay a go and see if it starts to change something for you. What I'm noticing is with the Joy Business Facilitators, there seems to be something that we cracked recently and I don't exactly know what that is, but it started not becoming so significant and that there was a joy to it that we didn't have to get it right, like going and doing these business done different classes around the world. It was just like, all right, let's have fun doing this. I mean, the one that you just did recently, it's like the photos, the energy and the enthusiasm that was exuding from you, you know, every time you wrote something or I saw something was just awesome. It's like, I don't know if anyone in your class enjoyed it, but you did. (laughs) Oh, they did. It was amazing. It was so amazing. And people were like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this was a business class, you know? Because it was like it was like a being being you class and a joy of business class and a you know like just a vulnerability class and a you know like just so yeah. many different pieces and it's like and that's what I love about these classes it's like your business changes and your money flows change as you be more of you as you have more fun you know money follows creation money follows joy and so instead of going to the byproduct we actually go to like changing the energy of what's going on so that you can have the joy and the creation and the fun and then the business grows and the money grows out of that you know and I love that I, yeah yeah, it's really cool because that's exactly what it is. It's like your business changes, your money flows change as you're being more of you. Boom, yeah. that's it. Goodbye. Let's hang up. They're done. No. Yeah. <laughs> so go be you. And then people are like, well, yeah, exactly. You know, 
Exactly. And that's so where the classes come in, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but let's address some of that because you also said the money isn't the problem. You are book, which was written by Gary Douglas and, and um, Dane here. And can I tell you a little story about that book? The class that that book was created from was a two-day class that I organised in Gold Coast, Australia. And at that time, it was $250 to go for a weekend. Um, and you got <laughs> Gary and Dane. And wow. they flew out for that class. And we had 55 people there. And Gary was so excited. And he said to me, if you can do this every month, he said, we'll fly out to Australia every month and do this. I mean, this is when they were flying economy and staying in you know dodgy hotels and $250 mm -hmm. for a two-day class. And I'm like, to look at how much the business has expanded and grown, like Access was in four countries at that time, and now, you know, it's 176 yeah. countries. There's thousands of facilitators. And it's like, if you allow yeah. your business to just, you know, like instill chaos, and it's like, what else, what else, what yeah. else? It's like the money shows up and everything expands. So, but, yeah. so that's, that's my little, because then we created a book from that. And that's money isn't the problem you are. You can get on Amazon. You can get on accessconsciousness.com. And that literally, that changed my money flows as well. That was the beginning where I went, you know what? Stuff this. It's like I'm using these tools for everything else and it's working and I'm not using them for money. Why the hell not? So I started using yeah. them for money and things started to change. So what, do I, yeah. what I want to ask you is, you said some of your favorite tools that expanded your money flows came from that book. Can you just give us one or two of your favorite tools that you use with money that started to change everything for you? Gosh, you know, I, I don't even remember what's in the book and what isn't because it was so long ago that I read it and I actually haven't, I haven't read it recently, but there was a clearing in there. I remember the clearing. It was a really long clearing about, I think it was like, be, no perceive, receive, what I refuse, must never, dare not, and must always be, no perceive and receive to have total clarity and ease with continuous and increasing amounts of money for all eternity or something like that. <laughs> so everything that is right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pop, punch, roast, whiz, and beyond. I love um, that. And I like that you even remember yeah. that much. <laughs> oh, yeah. I ran it a lot. I have a weird memory for <laughs> clearings like that. But so that was one. Um, and I think I might have added to that. I don't remember the exact, you know, wording, but and basically what that clearing is, is really like asking to be, asking to know, which is really like our awareness, asking to perceive and asking to receive everything that we are refusing to be, no perceive and receive, everything that we must never be, no perceive and receive, everything that we must not, dare not, you know, be, no perceive and receive that we must also be, you know, perceive and receive to have clarity and ease with money, you know. And so looking at where am I, like, not looking for the wrongness of, like, what am I not being and what am I not receiving, but actually, like, inviting ourselves to be more and to to function from infinite being, knowing, perceiving, and receiving, which is not thinking, feeling, and emoting, you know. Actually, what's true for us as infinite beings. and for me, I've always gone there. And again, it's like with the acknowledgement and the knowing that the change in my business and the change in my money flows come naturally as a byproduct when I be more, when I receive more, when I have greater vulnerability with me. Um, like recently, I just have had a huge change in my business and money flows from just like finally kind of dropping in in a way to to some stuff that I just wasn't willing to to play with, like just a, a level of like letting go and being willing to lose everything in my life that I was, I, I was kind of using the tools to like avoid this reality of being willing to lose everything, which is a whole other conversation too. And I was like, all right, what if I was just really, 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 really willing to lose everything and just going to that vulnerability of, like sort of that, like the raw me, you know, the being and the receiving and the perceiving was, has been such a gift for me. And it really turned a lot of things around. And, you know, my business was kind of weird for a little bit there. And it was like, it changed it. But it wasn't because I needed to do more or because I needed to like hire more people or, you know, create more classes. It was literally now, there's something I'm not willing to be here and there's something I'm not willing to be present with here and 
once I was, when I really chose that, then things started to really change. So it's interesting. Um, a couple of things. One is you're saying, like the willingness to lose everything, and it, it is one of the tools that, that we talk about, like the willingness to lose everything, you can have everything. And one of the things that Gary was just saying on the Creative Edge Club, and if you want to find out more about the Creative Edge Club, it's on pub, it's on accessconsciousness.com as well. And he was saying people go to that place of like, oh, my God, I'm going to lose everything and have, and have nothing, because it is a tool we talk about. And it was so interesting because he was like, but you would never not have anything. You've got everything that you are today. Like everything that exactly. you created, you may lose a company, you may lose money, you may lose something like that. But oh my goodness, like, I mean, one of my favorite questions is what's right about this I'm not getting. You have everything that you've created so far. So then what, you totally. know, what is that? And, and everything that you be, you know, and that's mm. the value, you know, that's the real value, which like getting to that place of like, okay, whatever, like I'm willing to let it all go. Doesn't mean that we have to, but it's this recognition that I am actually like the value of me is not going anywhere. Like what I be in the world and the wealth of my being, it's not going anywhere. You know, like that's not nope. something I can lose, you know, but it's cool to get to that. Like, you know, like to know that you can create any, like to really know that you can create anything in any circumstances. There's so much freedom there. So much freedom yeah. there. Well, recognizing that, so a key thing that, that I learned years and years ago was that I am the source of creation, so you are the source of creation, not money. And so many people look at money as a source of creation, or they even look at their business as a source of creation. It's like you are the source of creation. Each and every single choice that you make creates a different future. It's like and every, right. every, every, every single choice you make creates a different future. It's like, so what are you choosing today that's going to create a greater future for you, your business, your money flows? And I love that you were talking about the, you know, the changes, that your business and money changes as you be more of you. So I want to ask you something too, Heather, about, because you spoke a little bit about, you know, growing up with money, et cetera. So you had money, you know, you, there wasn't a lack of mm-hmm. it. So then what I can sort of hear people going, well, why did she have to use money tools? Like, so were you left money? Were you given money? Did you have to create your own money? Were you empowered to create your own money? Was it like pocket money? Was it like, or just had all the money you wanted? What was that like growing up? I mean, I wasn't, it wasn't like I had like a free flow of money coming to me. You know, I, I, I mean, my parents, we had a beautiful home and all of that and, you know, there there wasn't anything that we couldn't have. And there was also like, you know, they, they also had and still have a lot of points of view about just like, you need to learn, you need to learn how to manage money. You need to learn how to, you know, have it, not have it. Like you need to learn your lessons with money. So Uh, what sort of things did they, did they, you know, did they, was was it empowering to learn the lessons with money? Was it very this reality or, did you, did you very really use reality. those? Like, what sort of thing? Yeah, I would say pretty this reality. Um, and I, you know, the 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 thing that was such a gift about it is, you know, I did I grew up like really I had I had a lot of luxury in my life as a kid, and I wasn't ever gonna give that up, you know. <laughs> so I've always had money. Um, I've I've you know, and I've had varying degrees of more and less and all that, but I've always had, you know, I've lived in beautiful homes and had, you know, had what I, what I desired. And I think the thing, the gift of finding access in the money conversations and access was the sense of like, you're really, really not wrong for desiring more. And that was something that I, I didn't really realize. I didn't realize that I even had that point of view, but you know, I was like, I'm. I mean, still, I'm just like, yeah, more, a lot more, a lot more, a lot more, a lot more. And I remember one time telling, I was doing a private session with a with somebody, another facilitator, and I told them how much money I was asking for every month, and they were like, they like started cracking up, and they were like shocked, and it was like this, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was a lot, you know. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so there's always been a demand in my world for a lot of money, you know, and I've had, there I'll definitely have been times where I've made that wrong and, you know, not as wrong. And it's amazing how our judgments kill the possibilities, you know, with all of it. Um, 
so because it is like you said at the beginning it's a controversial subject it's it's controversial to be like yeah i'd like to make millions you know and like but actually not with like the fantasy of it but actually like i'm creating that you know the demand um, for it yeah i mean you see people yeah say, oh, i wish i could have a million dollars but then they just sit around and and complain about what is not happening rather than wake up and go okay I'm committing to making at least a million dollars. Like, what's it going to take for that to show up? So you've got yeah. to actually be able to ask questions, demand of yourself, request of the universe, and be willing to receive. And I gotta say, be willing to be different as well. Like when you're yeah. mentioning, you know, it's a, you know, it's about being, you know, more of you. It's it's also about the being you and the willingness to be all that you are. No matter yeah. if it's not even slightly similar to somebody else. It's like, you know, be you and change the world. Dr. Dane here wrote a book about it, you know. You can get that on yeah. Amazon as well. And and mm. I remember the first time I made over a million dollars and I was so embarrassed that I'd made over a million dollars myself, like in one year. And I, mm -hmm. I remember I told Gary Douglas and Chris Hughes, who, you know, the founder of Access and a friend of mine, because <laughs> I knew that I'd sort of be safe with them. And I was at the mm -hmm. cafe in Perth, Western Australia, and they were like, Simone, that's amazing. And it was through different things. It was through access. It was through, I've always been very successful on share trading. It was like all these different places. But I realized I just made over a million dollars. And I was like, and what I noticed, though, was that I was embarrassed. And I was like, that's weird. Yeah. Like, why would you be embarrassed yeah. to be earning more money? It was like I would be less embarrassed if I went, oh, I've only earned 20000 this year. Because then that would be the yeah. same as everyone else. So how many of you are looking yeah. to be the same as everyone else rather than actually ask for what it is you desire? As Heather said, you are allowed to ask for more. And what is the more that you're asking for? If you destroyed and uncreated your business yeah. every day and asked what would you truly like to create, what is that? What is it that you would truly like to create? What amount of money would you like to show up in your life? You can ask for it and you yeah. can create it. I'm getting yeah. excited. My molecules. Me are too. Well, going, yes, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, one of the one of the things that has been really fun to play with lately, um, and I we were playing this with this a lot in my joy business class this past weekend, is um, Dane here who, who has been saying a lot lately. So, uh, like talking about this, ask and receive and make a demand and being willing to do whatever it takes, and then go live your life and then go live your life, and then go live your life. And to me, that is the joy of business in a nutshell. It's like, because we think a lot of times we have to, like, and I've done this so much, and actually I'm really just starting to get this <laughs> after having been using these tools for eight or nine years. It's like, okay, really, like, you ask. When you ask for something and you are willing to do whatever it takes and be whatever it takes and, like, really show up, but really there's this, like, the receiving of going, okay, cool, when I ask for something, the universe is now different, the universe is in motion, like, this request is out there, and it's occurring, and it's showing up, and knowing that, and now the way that we sort of interact with the energies of creation really is about going and living your life. So that might be yeah. sit down at your computer because that's where the energy is or go for a walk or go take a nap or, you know, go out and, you know, I went to the farmer's market the other day because that was where the energy was and ended up having this really cool conversation with somebody and there was a whole business thing that popped for me around it. And so it's like that, just like the, not separating our business and our like work, quote unquote, time with our life, and so we say business is the adventure of living. And when we really, it's like when you, we really know, okay, I have asked for this, it's on its way, and the way that it shows up is in me going and living my life and following the energy and being willing to recognize when it does show up, it's probably not going to look like I thought it would, and to receive it. And it's so I'm like amazed lately at how freaking simple it is, you know, and how easy and how much elegance there is when we function from that. And it's like, you know, people ask me, you know, when I travel, it's like, are you, is it work or pleasure? You know, and it's like both. I don't like, I both work all the time and never work. You know, those are both my reality. I live that I enjoy the adventure of living and it includes everything. And that's, where the money comes. That's where the business grows. 
I'm just writing that down. I love that. That was fucking brilliant. <laughs> it's true. It's like, go live your life. I mean, it, there's so many things. Like, I went for a run today in, well, 28 degrees Celsius, so whatever, that's friggin' hot, like, in Texas. And it was midday. But my body was like, move. And I'm like, midday, peak sun. Oh, well, my body was like, get out and move. <laughs> get off your computer and meetings. I did. And it was so beautiful. It was like, oh, my God, yeah. the earth is just screaming at me. And I started asking questions, too. It's like, okay, so what can – what? Because I know that the, there's a, a fabulous show on Netflix, um, One Planet. If anyone has not watched it, mm. please watch it. It's brilliant and about the planet and, and you know, just what's occurring. And it's, it's uh, David Attenborough is the, um, what do you call it, not the editor, the voiceover, and talks about it. And he doesn't sort of do this dismal thing of like, oh, my God, life is over, the planet is dying. He does, hey, we've got to do something here and we still can do something here. Yeah. And he shows you the places where we have done something and something's changed or where we haven't and nothing has changed. And at the moment in Texas, it's so beautiful and green and the the, the earth is just so alive. So I went for a run, which my body wanted to move. But what I also got was, okay, what is the earth also asking for? And I'm allowing that to just be with me and allow that to, you know, show up whatever that looks like. And I actually had an idea that Gary wants to do a, a year-long program with, uh, you know, about the earth, and I got some ideas for that. So it's like you never know what's going to show up and when it shows up and how it shows up. It's like, but I love that. If you go live your life, it's like that's where you allow everything to grow, you know, not just your business, everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. And when we and when we sit around waiting for it, or when we're like, like I used to do this all the time, I'd be like, okay, I got to be at my computer because if I'm not at my computer, then I'm not building my business. And there's no. And you're not creating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's this like total lie of doing, and and it's like it's in the the adventure of living, you know, and the living of your life that it's like that's where that's where the gifts show up from our requests and we're there to receive them. You know, if I've got my nose in my computer all the time, and sometimes that's, like, tomorrow I have the sometimes whole day it's blocked required. off. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow is my computer day, you know, and um, it's my business has been asking for that, like, hey, give me some focused time where you can actually, you don't have calls, you don't have, a, and just, like, get some shit done, you know, so, okay, cool. But it's the following the energy and really going, what's actually required right now? You know, what's required yeah. today? And, really not having a point of view that if I take a nap, I'm not creating my business. You know, I, I absolutely, if that's where the energy is, then that's where the energy is, you know? So I really want to point out here too. It's like this conversation I'm having with Heather, which I'm thoroughly enjoying. It's like, have you guys noticed (laughs) if you're listening here that we're not talking about how hard it is? (laughs) We're actually, you know, (laughs) mentioning how easy it is and it's actually joyful for us. So in the mantra of access is all of life comes to you with ease, joy, and glory. And it's like, that's pretty much what we are discovering. And yes, there are times over the years that Heather and I have definitely tried to get it right or and or gone to the wrongness of oh, us. Yeah. And it never, ever, yeah. ever creates anything greater. So even if you no. start to use some of the tools that we've mentioned here, it like may actually change some of what you're looking at with your business and your life and your money flows. And one thing I want to say is, I mean, Heather brought this up right at the beginning of the podcast is what are you aware of? What are you aware of with money? What are you aware of with your business? What are you aware of of how you would like to live your life? Not like somebody else is doing it. I mean, you could, you know, you see someone doing something and go, oh, yeah, I'll have some of that and choose that because it works for you. But don't choose it based on what somebody else is choosing. Choose it based on what is it that you would like to create as your life. Yeah. So Heather, yeah. with this is going to be airing on the 28th of May. So what if you what what classes have you got coming up? You know, from June onwards, and if you want to tell anyone about them or where people can find you, etc., they can find you on accessjoybusiness.com. Yeah. Heather Nichols is uh, yes. facilitated yeah. there, and you've got your own website page, I think. Yes, um, I'm on, also on the Access Consciousness website. So accessconsciousness.com/slash Heather Nichols. Um, and I have my own website, which has, that really has everything on it, um, heathernichols.com. I am, I'm excited actually. So, uh, I guess a few days after this airs, I'm doing a, um, I'm doing a joy business taster, which is, um, the night before a three day business done different class in Croatia and also online. 
and it's I'm calling it the anti-marketing marketing call. <laughs> nice. It really is about marketing your business by being you. And a lot of these, you know, things that we've been talking about here, it's not about the push and the sell. It's about being the invitation and how much oh, more dynamic that, that is. Yeah. That so that's something awesome. Website. Yeah, I really well, I love that. It. It's so true, though, because yeah. people try and present themselves as something else. And if you look at everything that you like, I always like things that are real. I mean, do you know, it's funny, on Instagram, I was just looking through it before, and uh, Hugh Jackman, everyone knows who Hugh, Hugh mm-hmm. Jackman is, you know, Australian actor, he's yeah. fabulous. And uh, he's such a, like, I want to say like a silly guy on Instagram. Like some of the videos he makes, he's just he's just being him at home. He's just like, here you go, blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> He's not trying to be cool. He's not trying to be, you know, something, you know, that the world tries to market him as. He's just like such an Aussie bloke. And so like, hey, yeah, <laughs> this is it, you know. And he's got a sense of humor and he's, you know, he's whatever. It's like, but he's him. And every single yeah. time I see, like say on Instagram, I remember my PR agent at first was just like, you need to have these shots that are, you know, the layered shots. You need to have all this and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Really? I was like, that is so boring to me. It's like I can see the beauty in some people when they do that. Like if they've got a gardening website or they're a hairdresser or something like that, I get that, have the beauty shots that look that. But I was like, my life is so different. And then someone else who works with me on social said to me, you know what, your life is so different. One day you're in Venice, you know, you know, walking across the canal and the next day, you know, you're in Costa Rica riding a horse. So it's like, I don't think yeah. I need that. And I was like, I'm not going to do that anyway. It's like, it's not me. Yeah. My Instagram account is, is me. It's not me trying to be something that I'm not. So I love that. I think yeah. that's brilliant. So people can find out more about your class on Heather Nichols. And I just want to say it's N-I-C-H-O-L-S dot com. Yeah. Heather Nichols dot yeah. com. And uh, go check it out. I think that's brilliant. Love it. I'm excited to see where yeah. you go with and, it. Yeah. Lot, oh, thank you. Yeah. And I, you know, the Joy Business classes are really some of my favorite to facilitate. Um, Business and Different is, I think, uh, I have the interesting point of view that everybody in the world should take that class. <laughs> so, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's our three-day master class. And then, of course, we've got this getting out of debt joyfully. I, I don't have any of those posted at the moment, and I'm looking at where I can fit them in. Well, and, after, you know, after where your I'm computer go day them. tomorrow, mm-hmm. by the time this airs, you might have one up. <laughs> <laughs> you, yes, that's very true. So keep keep an yeah. eye on my website, and uh, you'll see. <laughs> exactly. Cool. And you don't also need to have a money problem to join the Getting Out of Debt Joyfully. We've had lots of people. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I've had one lady in particular who definitely doesn't have a money problem, and she said to me, Simone, I'm so grateful. Like, she's got real estate all over the world. And she said, I've just doubled my real estate from your course. So yeah. it was that's something amazing. that just, clicked and, and changed something in her that made something greater possible. And that's what this is all about. It's like, what can you, you know, choose to be that's going to change and create something greater, more possible for you? So we're going to yes. jump off now. Um, I know you've got a session to go to, so we're busy, busy, yep. busy. And uh, thank you so much, Heather, for joining me here today. I am truly grateful for you and everything that you are being in the world and the Access Consciousness Tools. And, hey, the worst, you know, go get your bars run. If you're listening to these and you're never going to choose to do anything else, go find a bars practitioner and get your bars run. That alone will change everything yeah, for you. Definitely. So thank yeah, you, everybody. Your money and, um, <laughs> exactly. And I'll be seeing you soon at a ranch party, Heather. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Simone. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.